Coming up next on This Week in Torrance, after a summer of renovations, two schools unveil their new looks. And we'll tell you why change is cooking at some local school cafeterias. Then fall may be approaching, but West Nile virus is still a threat. We'll show you how the city is helping protect residents. And an Olympic medalist brings the gold back to Torrance. These stories and much more are just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello everyone and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Jin Chun. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks for joining us. Here are your top stories. Some big changes are coming to various TUSD campuses. Let's go out to reporter Charlene Chang at Fern Elementary's rededication. Thanks to the recent passage of a bond measure, students at Fern Elementary School are kicking off their school year with a brand new set of classrooms. Students, parents, teachers, city council members, and even Fernie the Falcon were on hand to celebrate the grand occasion, which included a ribbon cutting ceremony. Welcome to the new Fern Elementary School. Today we're here after about $13 million worth of improvements on this campus. Some of those improvements include only the second and third new buildings that are being built with our bond that we did pass to be able to fund this uh, um, wonderful endeavor. The new building features sustainable and energy efficient elements. In addition to classrooms, it also houses a learning center, computer lab, science lab, and a teacher's lounge. It was really to create, to use the new building to form an edge to the campus and create a new heart, which you see here we're standing now in the middle, so that the principal literally could stand in one spot and see all of her classrooms and all of her children, and they all now are sharing one community. For the first time in a decade, Fern's entire student body will be housed on the same campus. In previous years, fourth and fifth grade students attended classes across the street at Greenwood Park. It's bringing both of our campuses together. We were located on two separate campuses, so now we're all together as one unit. It's just amazing. People need to come and see what they have done for Fern. It's just wonderful. It's safe to say that Fern's new school year is off to a joyful start. We have been smiling all day. Everyone who walks on campus smiles. I myself smiles. I think just the, the sheer awesome feeling that we have that it's finally built for all that we've gone through, everyone is just very excited and I think it's going to last for quite some time. The renovations also include a newly built multi-purpose room which will serve as both a cafeteria and an auditorium. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Charlene Cheng. Thank you, Charlene. And Fern Elementary isn't the only school getting revamped. South High School recently held their rededication ceremony as well. Reporter Chia Kobayashi takes us there. Since opening its doors to students in 1957, the wear and tear of time has taken a toll on South High School's campus. But now, the school has a new and improved look, thanks to a two and a half year project that revamped its structures and facilities. A rededication ceremony was held to commemorate this significant milestone. Funding for this project came from Bond Measures Y and Z, which budgeted $23 million out of $355 million for South High. Both measures passed by over 70% of the vote, so it was a real landslide uh, support for our Torrance schools. John Bernardi of Balfour BD Construction is ecstatic with the results. The dedications, the smiles, the faces, you, you see it around, everybody's so enthused and so happy about what took place. It's just an amazing process. Every classroom and large facility was redone including the main gym, the cafeteria, and a brand new two-story walkway. Some additional features include new carpets, windows, doors, and even some environmentally friendly lights. Principal Scott McDowell cannot contain his excitement when speaking of his new campus. Oh my god, it's, it's like I'm working in heaven. It's, it really is a fabulous place to be. Uh, it's made a difference for the teachers, it's made a difference for the students. It, it has actually changed attitudes. And students agree with Principal McDowell. Before it was pretty ugly. It had lots of, like the paint was like chipping. And, oh, yeah. And now it's a lot nicer and cleaner. It's a huge change. New classrooms have air conditioning. Uh, the walls are white. 
the floors are nice, everything looks a lot nicer, it's easier to kind of learn. With all the new renovations, like this library behind me, the Spartans are off to a great beginning of the school year. For this week in Torrance, this is Shea Kobayashi. Thank you, Chia. Over the next couple of weeks, we'll bring you to the rededication ceremonies at Seaside Elementary, Wood Elementary, and Cali Mayor Middle School. Well, here are some highlights from the most recent City Council meeting. The city declared Saturday, September 15th as Coastal Cleanup Day. The city partnered with American Honda and the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce for this event that brings Heal the Bay and the California Coastal Commission out to the South Bay. Now, area residents will be armed with rubber gloves and bags and will comb through Torrance Beach for trash. This is a national event that hopes to raise awareness about the detrimental effects of pollution on our oceans and coastlines. The city is adding more compressed natural gas vehicles to its current fleet of 28. In the coming months, the city will add more refuse and sewer cleaning trucks and buses to bring the number of compressed natural gas vehicles to 40 by March of 2013. Departments are now transitioning to fueling on site at the city yard. Now at the meeting, the city agreed to purchase more than a million dollars of compressed natural gas for a period of 10 months. When council adjourned, they reminded residents that their next meeting will be held on the road. On Tuesday, September 18th, city council will meet at North High's library, located on West 182nd Street. Everyone, especially residents from that part of Torrance, is encouraged to attend. The big excitement at the council meeting was the appearance made by an Olympic champion. Let's go out to reporter Jay-Z Jeans, who had a golden opportunity to meet Carmelita Jetter. Olympic track star Carmelita Jetter was honored with a key to the city at this week's city council meeting. Before the ceremony, Jetter spent the day visiting her alma mater, Bishop Montgomery High School. When Carmelita was a student at Bishop Montgomery High School, she knew that it would take hard work to become an Olympic athlete. Today, she returned to her hometown not only as an Olympic athlete, but a gold medal Olympic champion. Jetter helped the U.S. team win the gold medal in the 4x100 meter race. She also set an Olympic record by winning a bronze medal in the 200-meter race and a silver medal in the 100-meter race. Even with her prestigious awards and newfound fame, she's never forgotten the place where it all began. It's just amazing to know that I came from a school that was very supportive, that are still supportive, that still follow me on my journey and, and you know, never gave up on me. And it's that type of support that Jetter says reminds her of the important things in life. Those are the things that keep you grounded. Those are the things that keep you knowing that this is reality. People actually love and care about me. Jetter says that even though her races last mere seconds, countless hours of training are required. I push myself, you know, really hard. I push myself to be the best, and that's what you have to do if you want to be at the top. Many of Jetter's training days begin when most of us are still in bed. She says that the road to becoming an Olympic athlete is not easy, but it's well worth the sacrifices. And she has a few words of wisdom for those coming after her. To never give up. To never give up and to push and just keep pushing till you get there. There's always going to be obstacles. There's always going to be someone that says you can't do it. And that's the person that you prove wrong. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Jay-Z Jeans. Thank you, Jay-Z. For more information on Carmelita Jetter's road to the Olympics, visit CarmelitaJetter.com. The city can now add Walmart to its list of newly opened businesses. Mayor yeah. Frank Scotto joined members of the community and business leaders for a grand opening celebration. The family-friendly event featured a ribbon-cutting ceremony, one-day promotions, and contributions to local charitable organizations, including the Boys and Girls Club, Meals on Wheels, and Arnold Elementary School. The opening of the store provides 150 new jobs for residents. The average wage at Walmart is nearly $13 per hour, in contrast to California's minimum wage of $8 an hour. So it is nice to have a business that has the, the economic uh, impact on the, on the city and our local communities. So that's why uh, the chamber and all the businesses, um, we are pleased to have Walmart here with us. I feel great about Walmart. Uh, I've seen other companies such as Ralph's or Albertsons going to an area and no protests are done because they're union. They're non-union, prices are lower, better for the community, better for the whole district in itself, brings more jobs, more availability. What more can you ask for? 
The new store may sound large at more than 75,000 square feet, but it's actually smaller than most Walmarts. The retail giant has more than 10,000 stores in 27 countries. Coming up, we'll show you how the city helps protect residents against the West Nile virus. And these men are drinking beer for their health. We'll bring you the details after the break. Something's not right. My first symptoms were constant tingling in my toes, my legs, sometimes I'll go numb. I had double vision. They said you have multiple sclerosis. Well, the beginning is the hardest time. Kind of had to get a grasp on reality. I had to adapt and change very rapidly. I had to learn how to drive with my hands. Yeah, that was interesting. I was a dancer. I don't see walking the way I walk any different than doing a dance. It just looks different. It's a different dance. You see me have an off day, it doesn't take away from who I am. A symptom may cause you not to be able to do that anymore. And at one point, I wasn't able to do any of those. But I would exercise every day. Since I've been cycling, it's definitely helped my walking. To make a lot of changes in my life and just adapt to it. I'm going to acknowledge its presence. I'm not going to discount it. But at the same time, I'm going to try my best to not let it stop me. It's a fantastic opportunity to be working together with a common goal of carrying MS. And sharing is the key. You could choose to join a gang. You could try the latest drugs. You could even choose to drop out of school. You can try to avoid the difficulties in life with a quick fix, or you can face them head on. She did. Make the right choices today and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. As we told you earlier in the show, there have been several changes at many TUSD campuses, and for some schools, that includes lunch. Reporter Lorena Salzedo explains. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, about 12.5 million children and adolescents suffer from obesity. This rate has almost tripled in the last 30 years, prompting First Lady Michelle Obama to take action. The Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act was put into effect this past June. The menu changes are probably the most drastic menu changes I've seen in my entire career. So our whole goal right now is to learn to understand these rules and regulations and how to implement them successfully in the cafeteria. The new changes in menu include serving more fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Students are required to eat no more than 650 calories for lunch and one grain a day. This new initiative was created in hopes of solving the challenges of childhood obesity. I think that um, there's a couple of um, factors that affect um, childhood obesity. Um, definitely, uh, uh, you know, being more informed. I think parents and students need to continue to educate themselves about making healthy choices. Revamping the school menu is not enough. The school district has teamed up with Torrance Memorial to bring Healthy Ever After an educational food program for parents and kids of elementary schools. A registered dietitian will meet with parents five times a year to empower them with information on nutritious eating habits. The program's hope is to teach children to change their habits and make the right choices. Even though it has only been a week since the new federal lunch program has been implemented, teacher Anna Maria Salfidi at Jefferson Middle School says that she has already noticed a change in the attitude and behavior of her students. I think they're on task, they're more attentive, and they can, they can concentrate for a longer period. According to the food service satellite operator here at Jefferson Middle School, every meal must contain a half a cup of fruit or vegetables or a mixture of the two if it does not include french fries. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Lorena Salzedo. Thanks, Lorena. To learn more, visit letsmove.gov. Summer may be winding down, but the hot weather is still here, and with it comes mosquitoes. A growing number of cities have reported cases of the West Nile virus. Reporter Chia Kobayashi tells us how Torrance helps protect their residents. It's an outbreak that many people don't seem to know much about. 
I have no idea what a snail virus is. Well, to be honest with you, I really don't know much about it. I was raised up on the East Coast, you know, used to uh, mosquitoes and everything, but uh, California, you know, you really don't uh, see too much in the area here. An alarming rate of 56 people infected with the West Nile virus has been reported statewide in recent weeks. But the city of Torrance puts effort into working closely with Los Angeles County Vector Control to maintain a safe environment. So there's things that we work with with LA County Vector Control on a weekly basis to help eradicate uh, the growth of mosquitoes in the city of Torrance. Deputy Public Works Director Jack Vanderlinden takes pride in helping maintain the city and explain to us the efforts that are being made. We sweep our streets on a weekly basis and uh, removing all the debris that could hold water in the gutter area. And not only that, the city of Torrance further carries out detailed plans. We look at uh, low-lying streets, sometimes where the water puddles. We try to improve those with certain uh, maintenance projects, capital projects overall. And we try to look at areas where water could be standing and uh, try to tackle those and repair those as quickly as we can. Some common mosquito breeding grounds include puddles of water, murky green water, organic fish ponds, and water near sidewalks, all of which Vander Linden says can be dealt with easily and quickly. For protection from mosquito bites, make sure to use mosquito repellents like these with an EPA active ingredient called DEET. Wearing protective clothing over your bare skin will also lower risks. For This Week in Torrance, this is Chia Kobayashi. Thank you, Chia. There are no known cases of West Nile here in Torrance, and though this year is shaping up to be one of the worst in a decade, the CDC believes that the number of West Nile cases has probably peaked nationwide. Experts also believe the extreme weather patterns we've seen this year, in particular abnormally high temperatures across the country, may have led to the outbreak. For more information on West Nile prevention, visit cdc.gov. Guys who love beer had good reason to visit the Red Car Brewery recently. Reporter Lorena Salzedo takes us to an event that asks men to drink for their health. The cancer support community of Redondo Beach held their third annual Hops for Health event here at the Red Car Brewery. It was a fun-filled evening with fresh flavored ales, finger-licking bar food, golf putting contest, and auctions. This guy's only event was organized to raise money for more than 140 cancer support community free programs. We have exercise programs, we have information programs, we have luncheons, we have social events, um, a great deal, all of it free. The idea of Hops for Health was inspired by a research study from Oregon State University. The study found that hops boost the immune system and can help prevent some types of cancers such as prostate or colon cancer. Hops are used to flavor beer, and so the Hops for Health event has become a good excuse to bring beer, health, and men together. Guys typically don't want to talk about health issues, and this is a great way to bring it up in a public setting and maybe broach some of those issues that you typically don't want to talk about. The cancer support community of Redondo Beach has assisted cancer patients and their families by acting as a support system. Board member Matthew Acaro first joined the nonprofit organization as a participant battling lymphoma. Everybody's afraid for you and they don't know what to say. But when you go to the, the cancer support community, they know what to say. And it just is a link where you can really communicate with people and get things off your chest. The event raised nearly $10,000, which will benefit their prostate cancer program. Everybody knows that prostate cancer is the number one cancer that's diagnosed in men every year. But can you tell me one in how many men take cancer? One in 50 percent of anyone 70 or over. The organization's mission is to ensure that all people impacted by cancer are empowered by knowledge, strengthened by action, and sustained by community. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Lorena Salzado. Thanks, Lorena. Sponsors of the event include Providence Little Company of Mary Medical Center Torrance, TaylorMade, and Vantage Oncology. For more information, visit cancersupportredondobeach.org. After the break, the Sports Desk is back and we'll bring you a preview of their newest show. At what age is the color that your skin was meant to be? no longer beautiful. Every year, millions of young women try to change the skin they were born with and say they die for darker skin. Sadly, some actually
only do. Melanoma is the second most common cancer in teens and young adults 15 to 29. And one person dies from melanoma every hour. It's time. Change your thinking, not your skin. Stop tanning. Learn more at spotskincancer.org. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. What you doing, Dad? My favorite thing. Really, Dad? What are you doing? Paying bills. Every month a stack of them come, just as regular as the rain. What's this one? That's a special one, son. I pay it first. How come? It's money for my retirement account. I put some money aside each month just like I was paying a bill. Wouldn't you rather buy something? I don't want to work forever and I don't want you to have to support me in my old age. In a way I'm buying peace of mind. I'm on the installment plan. The Sports Desk is back with a new show and a great new host. You may remember reporter Juan Hernandez. He worked here at City Cable a few years ago. Most recently, he's worked at Fox Sports, and now he's heading up the team at the Sports Desk. Say hello to Juan Hernandez. Hey, Ben and Jen. Thanks for that welcome. So great to be here. It's going to be an exciting season for fall sports. Keep it here on City Cable Channel 3. We've got football, volleyball, golf, you name it, we've got it. The Sports Desk airs every day at 4 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. right here on City Cable Channel 3. Now back to you guys. Thanks, Juan. We're looking forward to seeing you on the Sports Desk. As for us, that's going to do it for this edition of This Week in Torrance. We want to welcome Jen Chun back. Thank you. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Jen Chun. If you've missed any portion of our show, you can catch us again at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.